Okay, so here is a first run of Sibelius and uh, some steps here. I gotta click on Sibelius icon to get it going. And a uh, thing will pop up that looks like this. And this is basically a selection. They want you to either buy it, activate it, or uh, continue with the Sibelius first free of charge. That's what you want. Uh, it is a nice free software. And the music's probably going to kick in. There it is, yeah. So it gives you some nice music to jam to. Now, there is a score set up. Kind of neat. There are a bunch of templates here for you from, you know, single um, staff stuff to chamber groups and choral and song and handbells and so on. It's kind of nice. Solo instruments, guitar and tab, piano. Uh, just going to choose this treble staff here and um, so you click on it and choose your time signature. This is where you're setting up everything. So portrait versus landscape. I want portrait. Change instruments if you want. I'm, I'm not going to do that. 4-4 uh, four, four is great for me. Yay. Uh, and then when I hit create here, uh, this comes up. Okay. And here I am, and I like to move the score to more of the center of the screen here. And uh, there's there's a few things. You can add bars, you could delete bars, and so on. So you want to familiarize yourself with this menu. And this keypad should show up. If it doesn't, you could go up to View and uh, check to here. I'll, I'll hide it and then bring it back up. There's a mixer you really don't need to worry about right now. Um, there is a keyboard you could bring up if you'd like, and so on. A transport is like the play panel. Um, if I bring that up, here it is right there. So uh, I'm just going to bring that out of there. So there's home. There's the um, note input, which we'll get into. There's notations. This is clef, key signature, bar line you know, slurs, those kinds of things. And if you click here, there's a whole bunch more. And um, even note head type stuff, graphics, um, text wise, this is all of your things from uh, your expressions to your techniques to tempo markings. And if you click here, uh, as you look around here, there's everything from, uh, looks like box text and general stuff. Um, tempo marking uh, composer name which you know that's important so say if I wanted that I could put that in there um, you know here's a title so I can you know click that and then click right in the middle there and I'm actually gonna call mine um, something else like you know lead sheet and uh, fact or one and uh, composer name can go over here. So again, you go there and you find where the composer name is. I think I saw it somewhere and click on it. And then you click over to the side here where you want it and you type your name. <laughs> okay, so um, the stuff that's in the back here, that's um, those are things that if I say I hit delete, it'll remove it from the score and all of your parts. Uh, do you want to be hidden instead? Uh, you could say yes. In other words, um, those are things that you don't um, necessarily have to have or they can be there just in case. So I've got a ton of measures here. Now I'm going to start putting notes in. I'm going to use the actual computer keyboard this time. And my uh, I'm using a lead sheet here. Eighth note with a dot, and I can click wherever um, I want an A. Now, my next note is going to be a 16th note G. So I literally clicked on the 16th note and then pushed the G key on my keyboard. There it is. Now, my next note is going to be an eighth note. And in fact, my next one's an eighth note, an A then a G. Now here's the thing. This little thing here is what's called a tie. And so there's my tie and notice it puts it in. A tie goes to the same note just like that. Now finally my last note here. Um, I'm going to put a dotted quarter note A. And see how it's ready to keep moving on? And it's okay if you mess up. You click here on this um, 
cancel stop select button and it'll get you out of input mode uh, but I want to go on I want a eighth note rest and when I do that notice it puts it in automatically okay now I want a quarter note dotted and I think I want an A there we go and then I want a, a G eighth note man this is just rocking then a quarter note um, at a. Now, you don't have to use your mouse. All of these correspond to the numbers on the keypad. Right now, I'm pressing the numbers 4, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And as you notice, that's moving. So you, you don't have to touch the mouse at all. Now, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. What if the next piece part in the music, which it is, um, uh, does this and this only up a step so I can actually do the old copy and pay I right click for me I like to right click but so I'm just going to click this measure here whoops right click notice it's blue copy now over here I'm going to say paste now the whole thing I choose the whole measure and just push the up arrow it automatically transposes it up most notation softwares will do that and again, this copy and paste method is a very fast way. Boom, I got four measures in pretty darn quick. So I actually have uh, another measure coming up. It's kind of like this, uh, only um, it is up a couple notes. So I didn't even have to waste my time putting it in. I just copied and pasted and then transpose is what that's called with simply selecting the whole measure. Now, if I just want to uh, select one note and move it up and down with it, I could do that too. Uh, if I want to select two notes, I hold shift and I can move both of those notes up. It's just crazy. So that's the basics of how to uh, get notes in. Uh, I'm going to put a, uh, a marking here. Let me go to... Oh, where to go? Notations. I want to put a repeat sign here and a start repeat. So I click start repeat. And now that my mouse is armed, it's blue, I could click on that first measure and there it goes. So anytime you choose something in one of the menus, it arms the mouse and basically you click and it goes in. Kind of neat. Okay, next up, let's do uh, a couple things like uh, spreading things out. If I click and hold like this and pull downwards, notice how it spreads things out. And I could do that for each stab or each system, which is pretty cool. Okay. Or say, hey, I've, I've got, uh, looks like notes on this page over here. I'm going to hold shift. These are measures actually. And say, well, I just don't uh, want those. So uh, let me just what I did here. I, I, I clicked one and then I held shift and went to the end. And if I just hit delete, it's just going to clear the measures. Well, I don't want that. I want to say control delete. Control delete will actually delete them. And I'll say yes. And they're gone. Okay. So um, be aware you have to say control delete because the delete just clears the measure. It's still there. Okay. Let's put in some lyrics and go to text here's the text here and there's lyrics way over here and again here's all all kinds of other things here wow all right so i just want to click lyrics line one here so uh we'll do a multi-line i want to start by clicking right here under the first note with lyrics you have to be careful with your syllables now i'm going to type the word cigarette and this is from the song satin doll that i'm doing and I'm going to hit the dash. And the reason I do that is it moves me to the next note. But it also reminds me, this is all one word. So cigarette. Now I hit space bar to get to the next note. And it automatically spaces things out. Hold. Now I hit the dash again. I want to hit space bar uh, now. And then ER. Ta-da! So there, cigarette holder. So it's a combination of the word cigarette was three syllables. You have to break it up with those little dashes, which automatically move you to the next note. Space bar then automatically moves you forward as well. So uh, kind of cool. Now, 
I, I don't really want to do anything on a rest here. Now, if I accidentally click out of there, if I double click back in, I'm back in. So I, if I click out, there we go. I could double click back in. Space bar takes me to the next note, which wigs me. <laughs> uh, and I'll do a little bit. Oh, now over her shoulder. And um, you can have a dictionary with you to help you with, to figure out where syllables break in words. Um, she digs me. <laughs> uh, and so there's a, there's just a line there of lyrics. Now, what if I wanted to come back and do another line of lyrics? I could go up here to lyrics. This time I choose uh, lyrics line two. Okay, and then I click again here. Now this time I want to be under there, and um, this time I want bay B <laughs> shall we space space go. Now notice when I space twice, it put what we call a word extension under here. It did it automatically for me. These word extensions, you can actually double click on and pull them and make them longer and shorter. Most of the time, the software does a pretty nice job of uh, putting them all right there. But um, So baby shall we go. Now I double click to get back in there. Space bar. Okay. Out. And then S-K-I-P, skipping is what we're doing here, dash, and then P-I-N, okay, so out, skipping, uh, and then as I go on here, uh, I can continue typing my second verse, you just got to be very careful knowing that this is verse one, this is verse two, if I double clicked on digs me, I'm back into one, and you can see it over here where it says voice one, Whereas if I click down here by skipping, um, oh, let me make sure. Yep, I did. Oh, that is in voice one. That's right. Um, oh, I'm in lyric. Lyric one and lyric two. I'm sorry. Uh, so now I'm in the lyric two. It's going to be lined up horizontally this way. Uh, okay, so what about chords? So lead sheets often have chords. There's what's called chord symbols. And with chord symbols, looks like you can press Control K as well. I'm going to click chord symbols, and they go above. So I want to put a D minor 7, okay? And then I hit space bar. It automatically takes me to the next note. Now, chords often are on beats 1 and 3, so these are going to be very specific. That one's going to be right there above that note, and so on. So there will be chords above rest, because the chords go along with beats. And again, we're often looking at beats one and uh, three here. So sometimes there's only one chord per measure. Sometimes there's uh, two. Sometimes there's three or four. It just depends on the music. Um, so as I'm going along here, notice when I hit space bar, it automatically turns it into a nice pretty chord for me. Okay. So there I go. That is how you put in lyrics and chords. And for the most part, the word extensions and everything uh, go in nice and smooth as well. So you just got to remember to hit space bar and keep track of exactly where you are in the music. So say, oh, well, I want to go back to this verse too. I got to go double click here so I get a cursor out skipping and then space bar care full uh let's see is it a me yeah m i space go amigo there we go uh comma your uh flip and and a little apostrophe there instead of a g skipping flipping okay uh, and so that just gives you an idea now of how to use Sibelius, how to use some of the main features. You know, we did some note input. We did some copying and pasting. We did some um, adding some uh, text to here, like the title and the composer. And there's all kinds of other ones you can add here as well. Tempo and so on, information, box text. Then 
um, chord symbols and lyrics. And if you look around some more, there's other menus you can play around with, reset some spaces, change the appearance, um, comment on stuff, and so on. And then there's a view again. I w we were on this earlier. You can make things bigger or smaller. Sometimes I like to work with it, with it a little bit bigger just to make sure I'm exactly on the right lines and spaces that I need to be on. Um, again, there's node input, home, and of course, uh, they always want you to upgrade. <laughs> there is the, um, uh, remember that for bars too, you, you can uh, select bars and, and so on and add bars. But uh, you can go to the file menu. You can actually put the title in here as well. Put the composer name here as well. Um, on an actual title page but it, the most important part is to save it and when you save it most of the time it saves it as a dot sib which stands for sibelius file okay so there you go that should get you started in sibelius first <laughs>